Christianity and Islam are the largest religions in history, and together, Christians and Muslims make up about half the world's population. But the average Christian knows almost nothing about Islam, and the average Muslim knows almost nothing about Christianity. And there are people who want to keep it that way. There are Christians who don't want Christians to know anything about Islam. There are Muslims who don't want Muslims to know anything about Christianity. But I think we're at a point in history when it's very important to know about both faiths. This video is for Muslims who would like to learn something about what Christians believe, but who might not have a lot of spare time to study Christianity. So we're going to keep this as simple as possible, and I won't take more than a few minutes of your time. We're going to look at four Bible verses, one from each of the four Gospels. All four verses are the words of Jesus. Let's start with the Gospel of Luke. In Luke chapter 9, verse 22, Jesus, who refers to himself as the Son of Man, a divine title in Daniel 7, says to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Jesus says he's going to be killed and be raised up on the third day. Why is he going to be killed? He tells us in the Gospel of Mark, in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus declares, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Again, this is Jesus talking, not the Apostle Paul or any later Christians. Jesus says that he came to give his life as a ransom for others. He's going to die on the cross for others. What should our response be? Jesus tells us about the will of God in the Gospel of John. John chapter 6, verse 40, Jesus says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. Everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. Everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life. Do you believe in the Son? If so, Jesus says that he will raise you up on the last day. Jesus is the one who raises the dead. That's an interesting claim for Jesus to make, since according to both the Old Testament and the Quran, God is the one who raises the dead. Now, why am I sharing these verses with you? I'm doing it because of what Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, after Jesus has risen from the dead, he commands his followers, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptizing them in the name, singular, of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So according to Jesus, God is a trinity. The Son entered creation to die on the cross for sins. After he did what he came to do, he rose from the dead. and By believing in him, we have eternal life. Obviously, the message of Jesus completely contradicts the message of Islam, which is a huge problem for Islam, because Islam affirms the message of Jesus. If you're a Muslim, you may think you can escape this problem by saying that the gospel has been corrupted. Unfortunately, that escape route has been blocked by the Quran itself. The Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Christian scriptures. If you'd like proof, be sure to click on this video, The Bible, the Quran, and the Islamic Dilemma. See you next time.